So me and my family just spent seven nights in the Magic Robin Hood Resort in Spain, in Costa Blanca. Magic Robin Hood. Ven y vive la leyenda. And we had great time. But there are some things that I wish I knew before going, enjoying the holiday, and some of the things I wish someone actually explained to me or told me before actually arriving there. So here's some of the tips for you if you're planning to visit and perhaps questioning, was it really worth it? Here's our experience. Firstly, I want to talk about Jet2 and the whole package together. We didn't book everything separately, it was just all in one package. The service and the people of all of the Jet2 were absolutely amazing. I don't have any complaints about that, in fact everyone was very lovely. The legroom on the Jet2 was plenty, in fact one of the most legroom I've ever seen in an aeroplane. There was more legroom in there than in the bus transfer that we did later on. The downsides about that aeroplane though is that the seats don't recline. You might have a long transfer. We flew to Alicante and it should be 45 minutes minute transfer to the resort but because the Magic Robin Hood is the last stop you're gonna go through Benidorm and drop off lots of other people so it might be a little bit longer for you but the good side is that the bus was air conditioned and it wasn't too bad because you're in a new place Spain you like looking around it's all different and new for you so the kids enjoyed it and we didn't have any issues on the way back though the transfer was about one hour and 40 minutes and last thing I want to mention is the Alicante airport pricing. The pricing in the airport was very expensive. I'd say much more expensive than in England. For example, in Subway, the sandwiches, a foot long sandwich was 15 euros. And some of the more expensive ones were 17 euros plus a drink and other bits which is quite expensive. In terms of the room that we actually stayed in, there are three types of rooms. There are the normal, then the premium, and then the ultra premium rooms. What I can see the difference is that the normal ones are just normal rooms, which you'll see in a minute. Then the premium rooms have a jacuzzi outside and then the ultra premium have also like a canopy and then like a little balcony outside where you can be underneath the shade as well as a jacuzzi outside. Bear in mind, in order to get the premium or ultra premium, you have to have all-inclusive plus or all-inclusive plus ultra or premium ultra package, which I'll talk about in a minute. But here's a tour of our room. Okay, so overview of our room or lodge here. So this is the first entrance room. There is an aircon on the top there to control this. You can set them separate. There's another aircon in the other room, which you'll see in a minute. This is a sofa bed and then a bunk bed in the back over there. A little bit of a England style. Pictures, weird coming from England. Seeing that in here in Spain. They want to make it feel cool. So here we see first toilet and there's two toilets and bathrooms that are actually connected as you can see there but you can close it and the shower then in the main or oh, like entrance living room bedroom area there is a TV and a little kitchen where you have a microwave and the mini fridge. You're greeted with a little bottle of champagne um, and some uh, drinks as well in here. And then the second double bedroom in here. This is a very wide mattress, probably super king size mattress in here. A wardrobe on both sides and a night lamp on both sides with a little castle in the middle, probably somewhere from England. And there's another aircon in this room operated separately, so you could, uh, in theory, have two separate temperatures in two separate rooms. Big mirror on that side. And when we move onto this side, there is a TV in the corner there and another little mirror and little table over there where you can see. And then This is the second bathroom, shower, toilet, all the essentials, not bad. Although I've got to say this shower screen wasn't working as well as the other one. It's got a weird one that kind of fits in the middle and a lot of it splashes onto the floor. So you will have to use some of these uh, towels on the floor there to catch some of the water splashing there because it is 
a bit weird the way it folds. And that's the latch. And another little comment here is that if you've got only all-inclusive package, the minibar won't get refilled. Although we did have a guy come and ask if he want ours refilled or was gonna refill ours, uh, but because we were in and we weren't exactly sure what's going on, we said no, but I think you might be, but they told us you shouldn't. So don't expect it, but if you get it as a bonus, it's a nice thing. So next I want to talk about all-inclusive package. What does it mean? What does all-inclusive mean? To me, it means everything is included or it's all-inclusive as it says. Yet this all-inclusive package in that resort means some inclusive because there are two higher packages that you can go for. One of them all-inclusive plus, which you can also upgrade from Jet 2 when booking your holiday. And then there is a third higher package, which is all inclusive plus ultra or ultra premium what the spanish like to call so what's included in these different packages if you have just the all inclusive some inclusive then you have access to all of the pools you have one restaurant that you have access plus the snack places you have four bars for drinks there's one in the upper smaller pool and then three around the main pool. And in terms of snack places, there are hot dog vans, waffle vans, kebab and burger vans. But they are not open at all times. They're open at different times, but you can get the snack. But the waffles and snacks and what you can get from those vans aren't any different what you can get in the main restaurant. It's just the same stuff served a little bit closer to you but it's not any different. So if you think all the restaurants that are advertised on the website are included, then that is not true. You have only access to one restaurant and some of the snack places. And when you get there and ask about your package, they will try to make you upgrade to the premium or ultra premium to give you access to more themed restaurants. Is it worth it though? Well, let's talk about the food next. So the food then, at rated 5 out of 10. It's not amazing and it's average at best, but let me explain why. Firstly, some of the good sides. Because it's a massive buffet and there are lots of different choices all the way around, it's good choice for kids because our kids, they like to try different things and, you know, they can pick and choose what they want. So if you're in a restaurant, you have to order from a menu and you have only one choice, perhaps, that might not be good for kids. But because there's lots of other choice, they can choose whether they want chips, chicken nuggets, it's pasta, some of the foods that kids might like, or fruit, or some of the more healthier options. The fruit options there, very nice, and I'd say roughly about 20 to 30 percent of the menu or the actual choice options change over the night. So if you like your kids having similar things every, you know, meal, then there are the same options, yet there are also separate options that change all the time. So if you wanna go there or if you go in there again, then you do have option of having different food and different options or a little bit of a different menu as well. Regarding desserts, they're not very good. All the bakery of desserts, I wouldn't say are very good, at least to my palate or what I'd see people use and what they did. I was looking around other people as well and other tables, there was a lot of waste, a lot of food were being wasted there, which just means that other people were kind of sharing the same opinion as us. You could see some of the very expensive cuts of meat, so very expensive things like shrimps and king prawns and veal and some of the beef and lamb, but the cooking options or the way that the final product actually tasted probably didn't go well with most of the people there because I could see a lot of waste. If people enjoyed their food, they would finish their plate and probably just wouldn't have more. But people wanted to try everything, but then realize that the food promise is not quite what you expect or what you can see. It doesn't taste as nice. There are also other themed restaurants and I spoke to some of the people there who have the ultra package who were also able to go to some of the themed restaurants and they say that it's basically the same food. Maybe the Italian one offers you a bit more pizza but the actual stuff comes from the same kitchen. So they said that actually for kids, they'd prefer the main bits because there's more options for the kids in the main buffet hall, which is included in everyone's package. So upgrading to the ultra, asking for most of the people, they said it's probably not worth it in terms of food. But there's other bits that come included with the ultra, like going to other resorts. You can take a shuttle bus to some of the other chain resorts and spend the day in there, as well as a zoo as some uh, entertainment. So perhaps that might make sense for you. But for us, 
it kind of didn't. Also, if you go in there, make sure you find the actual ice cream truck, which is in front of the resort, kind of like outside in the resort, very close to the car park. And there you can get free ice cream where they actually scoop it from like the main bit and put it in your cone or in a tub if you wanted to. If you just ask for ice cream from the bars or from the main restaurant, you get some of these ones that are in the fridge and you can just get a cone, which are kind of like a supermarket ice cream rather than an actual nice ice cream that you put in the cone. So find the ice cream truck that's open, I think half four till half six, something like that, or half three. It opens in the afternoon. Go find the ice cream truck. It is much better ice cream than offered in the main restaurants. And you can get free drinks in all of the different bars, but there is a cup rule or thing. So this is what we had to figure out and this what wasn't explained to us at first, but you have to buy a cup for yourself, which costs one euro per cup and they're plastic cups. And whenever you wanna get your cup refilled, you have to go and take your cup back. They'll take it off and then give you a new cup and get it refilled. It's a little bit of a green way of you know making sure that there's not as much waste, which I agree. And after a day, you know, your day is over, you've had your swimming, you're going to take your cup back and you're going to say, can I have a ticket pack? So then you get a little card or a little pl plastic sheet that the next day you can take back to the bar and exchange for the cup or for a drink. I believe some of the higher packages will get some of these actually included already in your package. You will get some of these tickets, as they like to call it, or coupons to, to exchange for a drink, but that's how the drinks really work. So regarding swimming, what swimming options are there? There are two pools for adults and two pools for kids, and there are two sets of slides that you can go on. There are some extra slides in the main pool that slide into the main pool, but the big slides, they're really two separate places. But it's very important to note that if your kids are under 120 centimeters, they're not allowed to go on any of the slides, a part of the two that are on the bottom of the left side, the yellow slides, which are very, very kind of normal slides. So if they want to use any of these big donuts, inflated donuts, or one of the big slides, even to go with an adult, they are not allowed. So our kids were quite disappointed because most of the slides they wanted to go to weren't included, but because they're in Spain and there's still a lot of pools, they had great time. But a little bit of a disappointment of looking at the pictures, what you can do, but then realization, what you can actually do is a bit less. There's also one little fountain splash area in the back corner of the main pool that's sometimes open, seems to be open when it's hot or sometimes in the morning. I've only seen it once open like in the afternoon when it was quite hot, but most of the time it's only open in the morning if you want to enjoy that. There's also little pools around the main pool. They're not jacuzzis, they're not any different, they're just little pools, circular pools that are around the main pool. But I've got to say the lifeguards are very, very good. They were on the point. They were always whistling to people who tried to do crazy things so you can be pretty safe. And they were all the way around. There was multiple lifeguards all over the place. So they did a good job and kept everyone safe very, very well. I didn't see any accidents, any issues at all during the time I was there. Next, the activities and play areas. There are a few different things that you can do on the site. One of them is an adventure trial that is next to the main pool. But again, it's got the same requirement of 120 centimeters in order to actually go there. There's laser tag, which I believe is the same, and they're not open all the time. Uh, the adventure trial, I believe, is open from 5 p.m. onwards in the evening. There is also a soft play right next to the main pool where the kids pool is as well where you can just go there that's open all the time as well as the play area and there you can go anytime as well that's where the ice cream truck is in the front there are also sports areas in the back where you can play golf and tennis and gym but you'll have to book some of these activities on the app if you want to go there now for example the golf you have to book it in advance and i think it costs 20 euros but you will get a refund of that booking when you return the equipment so essentially it is free but a little bit of a faff to actually enjoy the um, activity i also want to talk about the service and generally the service and communication of that resort is pretty bad. You'll get the feeling that you're not really welcome there and whenever you bother someone there's kind of that feeling that why are you bothering me? Why are you asking me this thing? 
and the Spanish and English kind of a little bit clash. Now, I'm not saying that's every single person who we get in contact with, but I got that feeling from the main reception and from some of the people, you know, working in the bars and so on. But there were also some of the very nice people. There was a security guard who I was able to make a good friend with and we had great fun. We laughed and talked a lot. There was some other people who were very friendly as well, but generally, the gist is that the people who are serving there or the people who are working there, they're not very good communicators. For example, we arrive one o'clock in the morning there and then when going to the reception, the person there spoke hardly any English. So we were just like kind of given some kind of papers and said that tomorrow 11 o'clock, I didn't know what was happening there. I didn't know where we are. I didn't know where the restaurants are. I don't know what we're going. Then a little buggy came and took us to our cabin and then in the morning we woke up we had no idea where's any of the restaurants where's any of the attractions where, where are we supposed to go that none of this was explained and the map was very very confusing when you go and see the map that doesn't really help you find things and where you are and where you're supposed to go it's kind of like an abstract thing where kind of where things are but it's not like okay i'm here and how do i get there it's not as clear now i did realize that there's a huge language barrier between the staff and English people. There was a lot of English people there, but I saw everyone communicating with a, t a staff through a phone, like a, a Google Translate or one of those services that this is what I mean and this is where you have to go. But there are two Jet2 staff on site as well. So if you need to speak to someone, there was two English people there as well to, who could actually properly help and find out, um, you know, who to speak with or what's going on. There are two things that kind of put a little taint on, you know, the experience there. One of them was like on day one when I, we arrived there, straight away they're asking you for a review of the whole complex. I, I just woke up, I don't know where things are, how can I review this? Obviously I can see the marketing strategy there, get them while they're happy and not make a review afterwards, hence why I'm making this review now rather than giving a review there on day one. And the second thing was everyone has to check out 10 a.m. Ne regardless of when your transfer is from the site to the airport and outside, everyone has to check out 10 a.m. So our transfer was 10 to 7 in the evening. Now, 10 o'clock to 10 to 7, you're thinking, what can you do between that time? You're going to have to get all your luggage and move it out and put it in the luggage uh, hold in the front there. And then you have some kind of still, some stuff with you for the day, some of the change of clothes for the kids and some of the change of clothes for yourself to change into later on. But that is very, very inconvenient. I would much rather have us check out six o'clock or just when, you know, you're going, check out because then we could have showers just before and get ready for the travel just before we go in. Whereas now we have to move to another facility and there are some shower facilities that you can use afterwards as well even though you've checked out and you can still go on the site and kind of have a shower there but they're more like communal all together uh, you know there's just some lockers like a cubicle shower type of thing now i'm not saying that wasn't bad experience but i'm just saying it was a little bit inconvenient for if you're thinking about the service you're getting uh, how much you're paying for it I think extending it to eight hours later when you have to check out when your transfer is actually going, like an hour before the tran transfer or something like that would make a lot more sense and would, would be a lot more convenient and easier uh, for us to still do. Because now from 10 o'clock to seven o'clock in the evening, we still had to kind of kill time before we can go on the transfer to make sure that we're not missing it. And we have to ask for a lunch voucher from the reception so they can allow us still to the main restaurant, even though we're still like on the site and our transfer out isn't yet. So that was a little bit weird. In terms of entertainment, there are different things happening actually every single day for the kids and for adults. Now, depending on your package, some of the late night entertainment might not be included in your package. And there is the main show that happens, I think once or twice a week. Uh, we unfortunately weren't able to see it because that wasn't included in our package but that you can only access with the premium ultra upgrade package and they say that that costs on its own 250 or something like that but if you're an english speaking person all of the action all of the like the main show is in spanish and there's no translation uh, that's what we got from the other couples we spoke with. So you might not be getting exactly what's going on, especially the kids. But at the same time, there was mini discos and entertainment in the evening around 8 o'clock. 
that was actually really, really good. For example, one of the parrot shows was really fun. Uh, the kids really enjoyed it and you could see how some of the parrots do really, really cool stuff. So we really enjoyed that bit. So all of the little bits that are, you know, before kids' bedtime kind of thing, uh, there's plenty of them to go around and that was good. But just be aware, not all entertainment is included in your package if you go with all-inclusive. So in conclusion, I would say that we still enjoyed our time and this was one of the best holidays we've had and our kids really enjoyed it because being in the sunshine as an English person is very very good. Being in the pools, enjoying the hot weather is very good and relaxing. Would I go again to this resort and that experience? The answer is no. Would I recommend some of the other people to go there? I'd probably say no knowing what it costs. We spoke with some of the other couples there on the site as well who were English speaking and they shared the same experience where they said it's, it's very nice but I wouldn't come again, I wouldn't recommend other people to come here. Now why is it that you kind of have a little bit of a tainted experience and you'd say maybe not recommend other people going is because it's undelivered promise. Now, when it's all inclusive package and you see all the pictures, what you see online, that's why you're booking that place. You see in your hot tub, in your tub, you've seen all this big slide, you've seen all this entertainment, but when arriving there, and you see all these restaurants and all these different places that you can do, and when arriving there, you realize that actually the all inclusive package means some inclusive, and a lot of the restaurants, a lot of the activities, a lot of the things on the site that you can see, you have to upgrade with and that makes you feel that your promise was under delivered now if you have been in this resort before i'd love to know your experience in the comment section below as well as if you have some of the questions if i know the answer if i can answer this i'll try to do my best to answer your questions in the comment section below if you found this video helpful hit that like button if you'd like more videos like these subscribe and uh, thanks for watching i'll see you next time Bye bye